29 Minecraft Things That Might Annoy You Minecraft is a great game, but even the best things in life can have their fair share of quirks. So today, let's see the Minecraft things you might find mildly annoying. And hey, the YouTube dentist bets that you can't subscribe to the channel before this wither skeleton falls off the road. So to prove them wrong, sprint to that sub button below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number one, even though Minecraft is a sandbox, that doesn't stop the game from having unspoken rules. And if you ask me, some of those are just bizarre. Take this ladder, for example. Now, if we make a path land underneath the wall and then place a ladder, you can see it works just fine. Though if we place the ladder above the grass and then try to make it into a path block, it's a no-go. And why that order exists, I've got no clue, but at least now we've got the proper arbitrary way to pull this off. Number two, Minecraft has its share of odd collisions. And while we've talked about this in the past with minecarts and such, a stranger example might come in the form of signs. Now, from the front, there doesn't seem to be much of a problem here, especially when you place it on the floor. But if we get a side view of this one placed on the wall, then we can actually see how the sign floats off of the block, which is odd, but at least the other 99% of the time, we can barely even notice this. Number three, nether ward is a frustrating crop as is. After all, we can't bone meal or pollinate the thing, so it's very tough to farm. But then on top of that, the nether wart block might be even more annoying. Here, we can pack nine nether wart into a block for storage, just like many other materials. But then unlike those, we can't uncraft it. And I get that this is meant to keep you from just grabbing it out of the crimson forest and instead incentivize finding a fortress, but that doesn't make it any less of a ripoff to craft. Number four, Minecraft bricks have been around for a long time. And with that storied history, dating back to the early versions of Java Edition Classic, the texture has changed a bunch. And while it's clear to see that it's done a lot of growing up, the texture still has one issue to see. That is, if you look at the bottom of the block, you'll notice that some of the bricks don't line up. Rather, since the texture is repeated, there's not a logical consistency with the brick placement, which is a small complaint for sure, but mildly infuriating nonetheless. Number five, if you've messed around with redstone, you know that these dispensers can be a very useful block to have. But while there's definite benefits to using these things to bone meal crops or pour water into mob farms, they do have one sticking point. And unfortunately for them, it has nothing to do with the block, but rather its crafting recipe. See, since this relies on non-stackable items like bows to craft, there's no way to quick craft the item, even with the recipe book. And that alone turns crafting one of these into a real tedious mess. Number six, as we all know, Minecraft's a 3D game, but that doesn't mean everything in the game is a 3D model. For instance, even though things like tools might look 3D when held in your hand, that just isn't so. But rather, the game stitches together these 2D textures into somewhat of a 3D model, which is interesting, but it does leave imperfections, mostly seen along the pixels on the side. And folks, it just takes one quick look at the Vanilla Tweaks texture pack to see that a stitch fix is possible, and hopefully we could see such in a new update. Number seven, the Ender Dragon is a destructive boss. Truly, unless the block is native to the end, the odds are that it's getting destroyed. And while it makes sense that the dragon could break down your cobblestone tower, why are ender chests on that list? After all, they're made of obsidian, so the logic would figure these are pretty safe. But as you can see when we put these next to the dragon, that's just not true. But hey, at least if she breaks this chest, your items are still well and good up in the cloud. Number eight. It's no secret that Steve can work up quite the appetite, but our empty hunger bar only tells a fraction of that story. Because give him the chance to eat a soup or a stew, and the player not only slurps it down, but physically takes chunks out of the wooden bowl. Which, I'll admit, would be funny if that was the last we saw of the bowl, but since we get it back, I think the chewing particles are a bit of an oversight, and maybe it's worth giving Steve a bit more manners in the future. Number nine. The addition of stripped logs into Minecraft brought a huge shift to building, because finally we had something that resembled the texture of logs, while matching the color of the plank textures inside. Or at least, they mostly do. Since, if we were to line them up, it's clear to see that dark oak just doesn't fit up with the rest of the pattern. Which is a shame, since a darker shade for the dark oak texture would look quite nice. And while there might be points for changing this just for consistency, I will admit that Kern stripped dark oak does look quite nice as well. Number 10. If you've ever played the two versions of Minecraft, then you know that Bedrock and Java have a fair amount of mismatches. And while potion cauldrons would be cool to see in Java, I think Bedrock's versions of armor stands is a gold standard as well. Here, the armor stands can not only be posed, but also have arms by default. For contrast, in Java, the armor stands can only hold things with the help of special commands and NBT tags. So, Mojang, all I ask is to give these armor stands a hand in the future. Number 11. With another update in 1.16, we got something of a counterpart to cobblestone. Here, we could use blackstone as a substitute for crafting stone tools, furnaces, and even brewing stands. Which is nice, but it's not a complete replacement. For some reason, unlike cobblestone, blackstone can't be used to craft pistons or certain pieces of redstone equipment. Which, I get it, the 
nether isn't exactly the place to do redstone machinery, but I also don't get only doing half the assignment. So why not give Blackstone the proper welcome to the crafting side? Number 12. While Mojang works to bring Java features over to the Bedrock Edition, one notable exception so far is the lack of a hardcore mode in Bedrock, which seems disappointing until you realize Bedrock's tendency for random fall damage bugs. Cases like this, where the player just seemingly dies out of nowhere with no rhyme or reason. And it only takes one look towards something like Reddit to see just how much this annoys the community. So while hardcore and Bedrock would be a welcome addition, if your world can end just like that, we've got a problem. Number 13. As we've talked in the past, Minecraft sprites don't always line up with the game's world. And a long-standing example of that lies with our classic helmets. See, in the iron, gold, and diamond variants, there's no sign of a nose piece in the sprite. But when you put it on, those pixels just appear. And to be clear, I don't think anyone is against the idea of having a nose piece on the helmets, but maybe take a page out of the Netherite's book and update the sprites. And hey, since spectral arrows got fixed, maybe there is some hope. Number 14. Once you see something, it's going to be tough to unsee. So I apologize in advance, but you should know that command block textures happen to be off center. And funnily enough, that isn't only limited to one side, but rather all of these textures on the command block are skewed to one side instead of the other. Now the reason is likely that command blocks are a 16 by 16 texture, and the pattern here would require something like a 32 by 32 to pull off. But really, since the command block texture already changed in 1.14, why not do one more shift to make it right? Number 15. Chainmail armor is somewhat of a white whale to the Minecraft world. After all, as long as it's been around, there's been no way to craft it without some kind of cheat. And after Mojang removed the recipe using fire, we've been out of luck to use this armor in our worlds. That is, until 1.16 came around, and then we finally got chains added into the game. But at that point, when it seemed like we had a chance, it turned out that chains could only be used for decoration, nothing else, which is safe to say a bit disappointing. Number 16. When it comes to graphic design, it's always nice to have things line up, which is why this experience bar poses a bit of a problem. You see, in Bedrock Edition, the right side of the bar matches up with the hot bar's side, but the left doesn't. And sure, the game still plays the same whether it's off or not, but programs like Photoshop make lining things up so easy, so there's little reason not to do so. And now that I know it's there, it's going to be tough to unsee. Number 17. Item frames are an incredibly versatile block for decorations, and with the recent addition of glowing and invisible variants, there's even more of a reason to use item frames inside of your creative builds. But that only makes this problem all that more noticeable. Since when in creative, if you punch an item to get it out of a frame, much like you would in survival, it doesn't drop the item, but just deletes it instead. And that could be quite annoying and definitely unintuitive. So save us the hassle and just drop the item as is. Number 18. By themselves, villagers are an irritating mob. But when you try to move them, that frustration cranks up to 11. Since they can't be led around like pigs or cows, we need something like a boat to take them long distance. Distances. But using a boat in a village has its own problems. Namely, if you row the boat on top of a path block, you're out of luck. Since you can't row the boat upwards, that one pixel is all it takes to lock your boat to that path. And now you gotta break it and start all the way over. Number 19. Plains biomes make for great locations for building. Just there, you get lush grass, flat surfaces, and an overall nice atmosphere for your base. But there is one problem point you're sure to notice. Say you're placing the blocks as a foundation for your new house, laying them out in a row, only to have your flow interrupted by a measly flower. Since since tulips, unlike the neighboring grass, have their own persistent hitbox, meaning we can't just place our blocks as we please. Which means most of the time we see these, they're just going to be a roadblock to your building flow. Number 20. Obsidian mining is a pain in its own right. But as anyone knows, if you're mining this by lava, there's even more opportunities for irritation. Say you take the time to mine out one of these cubes, only for some then newly exposed lava to flow and then burn that item right before you could grab it. It's a rude awakening, that's for sure. And while there are ways to mitigate the risk by using a water bucket, that doesn't bring back the one I lost to the fiery abyss. And all that wasted time is surely gonna sting as you mine the next one. Number 21. Some things sound cooler in theory than they are in execution. And I hate to say it, but I think Frostwalker's in that bunch. Don't get me wrong, when it works and you're sprinting in time with the ice, it's great. But all it takes is one jump or a bit of hesitation, and then that whole rhythm is doomed. Sure enough, once you're in the water, there's no way to reactivate the enchantment without finding another shoreline. And if you ask me, that grievance keeps this enchantment from being the real stable it could be. Number 22. Accidentally crafting something is a bad time that we've all been through. Because when you mistakenly craft another chest plate for your friend, that's a lot of value that you just washed down the drain. Now sure, you could smelt it in your furnace for a return, but folks, that's a rip off in its own way. A full durability iron or gold chest plate, which costs 
72 nuggets to craft reduces down to only one in a furnace. And I'm familiar with a margin of error, but that just seems ridiculous. And it's definitely not worth the attempt. Number 23. The ability to glaze terracotta opens up a bunch of new patterns to use in your builds. And while some of those are fun, others can be a headache. For an example, if we look at the light gray glazed terracotta block like this, it seems fine. But when you align it like so, the middle design doesn't line up across the blocks, which shuts down some really interesting floor patterns before they could even get off the ground. And maybe there is someday we'll see these centerpieces line up with one another. But until then, I'd rather just use a different block. Number 24. If you're looking for annoying blocks in Minecraft, then the cauldron is an obvious candidate. After all, it's frustrating for something that holds water to lose many of its properties of said water. And that juxtaposition only gets more apparent when you put it next to waterlogged blocks. Here, we could use the one pixel of water on top of a waterlogged chest to not only save us from falls, but also allow for the riptide enchantment. But with the cauldron, no chance. It's only good for extinguishing fire. And maybe it's just me, but I think that's rather pathetic. Number 25. Gold tools don't get a lot of love. And while it's understandable given their shortcomings, there are plenty of people who mention that gold is faster than diamond, which I'll admit is true. But let me offer a counterpoint. As you can see here, each pickaxe can break its respective ore material, all of which, except for the gold pickaxe. And if you ask me, that's pitiful, even if gold happens to be faster than diamond. I mean, gold's soft in real life, so I guess this does mirror that, but it's things like this that really make gold a worthless choice to pick at any point of the game. Number 26. Now, I get it, math itself can be quite annoying, but if we crunch the numbers, it's safe to say that Minecraft is ripping you off. If we hop over to a crafting table and lay out the material for some trap doors, you'll see that six planks breaks down into only two trap doors, which when compared to the three doors that we get from six planks placed vertically, it's just embarrassing. Now, wood is by no means a precious resource, but any scam, no matter how small, is still gonna sting just a bit, and this is no different. Number 27. Transparent blocks are a weird thing in Minecraft. Most of the time, we'd think these to be right what it says on the tin, something that lets light pass through in some way, which, by that definition, cobwebs be transparent, and it's the reason that we could open a chest with a cobweb on top. However, put that same cobweb over a skeleton, and the mob doesn't burn in the sunlight, which is strange considering how other transparent blocks, including chests, don't provide coverage to skeletons or zombies. And honestly, that just seems unbalanced. Number 28. Minecraft has been through a lot of updates over the years, meaning that some things are bound to fall to the cracks. And a prime example of that neglect seems to be the white tulips. Though, not with the flour, but with the crafting recipe. See, when the flour was added in, white dye didn't exist. Rather, we just used bone meal. So to keep the flowers from crafting into bone paste, Mojang decided to use light gray dye instead. However, now that we actually do have white dye in the game, it seems like we should change the recipe to match the description. Number 29. Stone tools are a classic bit of Minecraft gameplay. But while we usually make these things out of cobble, does anyone else find it weird that stone tools couldn't be made out of actual stone? Sure, it would be annoying if this was the only way to craft stone tools, but given that the nether updates blackstone works, I see no reason this couldn't at least be an option. And let me be honest, would it be practical? Probably not. But I'd also be lying if I didn't say it bugged me whenever I noticed this. And with that, folks, pester that sub button below and have a good one, alright?